So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a cyanotype print, which is like a blueprint. And what I've done is I have pre-sensitized a piece of fabric, which is just cotton sheet uh, material. And it's sensitized with two chemicals. When exposed to bright uh, ultraviolet light, they're going to uh, create this really beautiful cyan colored blue pigment. So it's one of the very original uh, photographic processes that was used in the 19th century and it's like really easy to do when it works and you, you have good sun. I decided to do this because I, I wanted something on fabric. I wanted a, a photograph that I could stick into a bottle like it was the fuse that would ignite a Molotov cocktail. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know what picture I would use, but I finally realized that this is perfect a portrait of Walter. Bates. And why, why Walter? Uh, I mean, for me, Walter uh, Benjamin is important because of his ideas about photography and how photography is uh, reproducible and it can be uh, made in many, many copies. And in doing that, one can uh, really influence and reach a lot of people. Now, your pictures constitute a visual diary. And you have said that the diary uh, floats between reality and fiction. Can you explain? Often, you know, when you look at something like um, a hand on a tree mm -hmm. and this was something that was kind of you know a very beautiful image to me but it was also in a way set up you know I mean it was something Which that is I, rare for you yeah you but it was something that I wanted to, to do. I wanted to make a picture of, of a hand on a tree and it meant something but um, it's something very concrete whereas this picture here is more abstract it's a picture of nature uh, but because of the way the picture's made, it's, it's very abstract and it's hard to make, you know, like an image from it, really. And so, uh, to me, it's more of an interior image and it had more to do with, with how I felt about the sun and, the, and nature. That's why I put these two pictures together because I think that the, you know, the combination of of something concrete that you see and that you can recognize it, and then something more abstract. Uh, when you put them together, it says something more. Yeah. I mean, it's like yeah. then there's a story about, you know, about a feeling of, of nature and, and, and touching, actually touching nature. So here we are in the section that deals with portraiture, and it seems to me that you are very comfortable taking portraits. And it's interesting that there are portraits of very well-known people who appear totally relaxed in front of you. And then there are photographs of people that you probably meet on the street or in a store, and they're equally comfortable. You know, I, I, I wish I could say I was always comfortable uh, making portraits. I, I'm not always, but sometimes I am. Making the portraits is a way of more of documentation for the projects that I'm working on. So photographing Gordon Parks, I mean, he was comfortable being photographed, I think, no matter what, because he was just such an outgoing man. This one was, was at an, a kind of event where he was there and he was actually talking to somebody and he was in this very beautiful light. And so I, I made the photograph. He was not posing for me in any way. Uh, and and I, I cropped it in a way, so it's just a small part of the negative focused on him, and I love the light on his face, you know. What about photographing regular people? Uh, and they all seem so, as almost as if they know you, <laughs> for example, <laughs> this person yeah. on the street. I mean, he's laughing at you almost as if, yes, hello, how nice to see you again. <laughs> uh, the people that I photograph um, are all regular people. Yeah. 
whether they're well-known, famous artists or workers. I mean, they're all regular people and politicians as well. I mean, I, I kind of I have to approach it that way. So this guy, I mean, he was working demolishing buildings. I mean, he was a demolition worker. And I, I just saw him out there, and there's like this dust and smoke all over the place. And this is, um, you know, at the time when uh, they were demolishing a lot of Times Square in New York City, and they were just pulling these buildings down and then building new hotels and, you know, high rise office buildings and all that. And so I just, he just seemed so happy. He was having a good time. And, and I approached him and I, I um, asked if I could photograph him. And he, you know, he, he was very much, you know, that was him. He was, I don't know that he was enjoying himself, but he was, I think he was happy to be recognized. You know, this picture of a, a, in a butcher shop in Cleveland, Ohio, was made just uh, two years ago, 2019. And the picture of the uh, demolition worker was 1986. And I probably approached these people in the same way. So we have created a very small section here that has to do with politics. Of course, we live in Washington, D.C., you live in Washington, D.C., so the politics really matter. And it's interesting what you have really selected to comment on the politics. The first picture was taken after January 6th, correct? Yes. I was interested in, uh, in how could I make an image of, of how it felt, you know, the attack on Washington on January the, I mean, the, the physical attack on, on the Capitol by supporters of, of uh, Donald Trump and, the, you know, the executive branch. And so I, I, I went there maybe a few days afterward, and I worked very near, nearby at the National Gallery of Art now. So I, I went there and I just saw you know, there were soldiers, you know, like National Guard kind of sitting around and, and this big fence and the most beautiful light, you know, the light that I love about Washington, you know, like late January or early January, uh, you know, winter light glowing off the Capitol building. And so I just photographed it. I took only a few photographs uh, through the fence focused on the fence itself uh, because it was then that's the barrier that was keeping those of us who live and work in Washington out of our you know our our, our city now Philip uh, I absolutely love your photograph of streets and these in particular are really remarkable to me they're from London and they really are like paintings uh, they have saturated colors, they have a surprising light, uh, like this one is almost like part abstract and part you can really see the streets. And you have said yourself at some point that um, the photographs could be as good as paintings. So here I'm looking at, you know, these kind of uh, quiet streets, sometimes at night, um, and, you know, looking at them really as, as a kind of palette in, on which to compose an image that, you know, that says something about that place. And, well, I was really lucky, I mean, fortunate to be able to go to Cuba from the U.S. and in 2008 it was a little bit more open and, and um, I mean I, I knew that if I would be seduced by visually by the place so I, I decided I would limit and very carefully limit what I could do there so I took only one camera and black and white film and as a backup I also took a little point and shoot uh, digital camera, so I did make a few color pictures. I used that more to document the art that I was looking at, but 
So, but the photographs that I made in Cuba were uh, almost all black and white, uh, which is not what you would expect uh, from an outsider going to look at Cuba. Um, there is a great tradition of black and white photography in Cuba, uh, but I, uh, I think the limitation uh, of actually being forced to see it in black and white uh, was really good for me. It, it caused me to, uh, to think carefully about what I was going to photograph and how I would do it. So Red Lens is a, is a book that I, I created. Uh, it, it was published in uh, 2015. And it comes out of a, you know, a real desire to, to make a book with my photographs. I, I had a, a sequence of pictures actually put together the way that you see in the case here. And I, I used that as the kind of uh, structuring device for a, for a story that I wrote. Yeah. Would draw and paint and kind of, you know, illuminate uh, the photographs, and sometimes I would write on them, uh, and very freely, uh, and I would use just the, the materials of like tape and, you know, kind of sketching and, and all of that, so I'm actually showing in the book itself part of the process of making the book. 